Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be talking about a weird storm that's coming to the United States that's going to be very slow moving but it's going to bring a lot of rainfall along with even some snow in some areas with a winter storm potential and then as it moves further to the east toward the southeast United States we're going to see the potential for severe weather very high wind speeds and almost a tropical storm like system down in parts of the Gulf of Mexico. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast and let's begin with what's happening right now in the United States. We'll begin with the central and southern plains and this is right now where the storm system is located. We are beginning to see some moisture ramping up here coming out of the south. A lot of cloud cover right now across the central and southern plains and by the way there's actually a meteor shower tonight. It peaks tonight. It's going to be upwards of 150 meteors per hour here in the United States and unfortunately for those in the central and southern plains this is what we're going to be dealing with there's a lot of cloud cover unfortunately even some rainfall in some areas so again unfortunate news if you're looking forward to watching that meteor shower same thing with florida there is a ton of cloud cover down there as well even some rain back down in southern florida right now and then also back up to the north pretty dry weather stretching from the northeast back into the midwest and even in the northern plains that'll change a little bit as we go over to the next few days there will be some changes we actually will have to watch for a couple of very small disturbances to kind of march across parts of the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and the Northeast as we get closer to the weekend. Now let's talk a bit more about the weather pattern that's coming to the United States because it's going to get very interesting. We are watching a very interesting weather pattern unfold as we get closer to the first day of winter and as well as Christmas Day. There are going to be some interesting things ahead. So right now we have that low pressure system developing over the Rocky Mountains. Notice it's overly weak right now. We don't really have any strong jet stream winds here with this low pressure system and even at the surface it's not a very strong low pressure system then back up to the north and east we have a low pressure system back up in canada very strong jet stream winds that are ongoing in the northeast but again nothing too crazy there right now there's really just some flurries if anything in terms of precipitation but as we go closer to thursday and to friday notice that this low pressure system here is going to slowly move to the east this is by thursday 24 hours from this time that i just showed you it's going to move maybe 100 miles to the east it's going to be a very slow moving system reason why well this is a closed low and a closed low is when we have a low pressure system with closed height contours um, basically detached from the jet stream now this is not a cutoff low there is a difference a cutoff low would be when we have the jet stream completely cut off from this so you can see here the jet stream and this is the polar jet stream by the way it is entirely connected here uh, notice again the height contours connected to the jet stream so this is not a completely cut off low cut off lows are much slower overall and they sometimes can produce some significant severe weather but in this case this is just purely a closed low and we also can compare this by the way to the 500 millibar chart which is usually where we look to see if it's a closed or cutoff low and again notice all these closed height contours around it but again jet stream is still attached to this low pressure system so again overall this storm will be moving pretty slowly once we go into friday the system continues to move to the east we are actually going to get two different low pressure systems with this or at least two focused areas one of which will be closer to the polar jet stream and the other which will be in the central plains and these both will be producing their own threats but really the one to the north isn't going to be much of a threat it's going to bring some isolated snow showers and isolated rain showers along with that but this low pressure system is the one that we need to be watching for very closely especially if you're in the southeast united states because it's going to try to merge with an area of moisture down in the gulf of mexico and what that'll allow for is the potential for a disturbance to develop now this is going to be a cold core system so it's not necessarily going to be a tropical storm but it will behave as if it was a tropical storm with some gusty winds and very heavy rainfall and we even could see some severe weather out of that now that will continue over the weekend and once we go into early next week really really quiet weather pattern is likely across much of the united states by early to mid next week notice a high pressure system will dominate very weak jet stream overall and we won't really have to be dealing with too many storms it looks like as we get closer to christmas week but again as we get closer to like around christmas there's a chance for a couple of storms by that point but just before that things look to be pretty quiet overall so let's talk more about this storm in depth beginning with the watches and warnings again notice we do have winter storm warnings in effect for parts of northeast new mexico back into the texas panhandle and oklahoma panhandle winter weather advisories in effect outside of that in those purple boxes again it's not really covering a huge area per se but there will be several inches of snow in these areas because of how slowly this low pressure system will be moving so let's go through the future radar beginning with wednesday and again notice the rainfall stretching from kansas back into the gulf coast 
this is all the moisture that we're seeing coming out of the south and once we go into thursday morning we are going to be watching for some snow across parts of new mexico and as well as colorado it will really not move into texas until probably late thursday into early friday morning and notice how slowly the system's moving again it's going to be a very slow moving system west to east heavy rainfall will continue we might see some thunderstorms once we go into friday across parts of north and central texas i don't foresee any severe weather out of this but this will be something to watch for in central and southeast texas more than anything maybe an isolated thunderstorm back up in north texas another feature i want to point out by friday morning we will be watching for a small disturbance in the upper midwest might bring a little bit of snowfall and rain so keep an eye on that if you're back up that direction high pressure dominating the east coast by friday afternoon into the evening hours notice all that moisture and that rainfall will continue to move to the east it'll gradually weaken out but notice back down in the gulf of mexico a lot of moisture and also a lot of rainfall down there this is all going to merge into one system down in the gulf of mexico as we go into the weekend and it will look a lot like a tropical disturbance here in just a second but again notice the system back up in the upper midwest that'll continue to bring a little bit of snowfall across parts of like northern minnesota and maybe even up to closer to like the upper michigan peninsula and then by saturday morning notice that low pressure system developing in the gulf of mexico the ocean waters are way too cold at this point for there to actually be a tropical disturbance here unless it goes even further south of this which is pretty unlikely right now but regardless we're still gonna be seeing similar impacts we're gonna be looking at some tropical storm force winds wind gusts around 40 to 50 miles per hour in florida not everybody will see that but some areas will i'll show you which areas will here in just a second other thing we'll have to watch for is isolated severe weather and the fact that there will be some very heavy rainfall by sunday a little bit of rainfall here across ohio back through the ohio valley again no severe weather out of that then rain continues across florida by the time we go into late sunday night into monday morning the system moves off to the north and east high winds possible right along the coastline we might be looking at a like nor'easter sort of thing as we go into late monday night to tuesday morning doesn't look to be a big snow event but there will definitely be some rain and by mid next week things dry out entirely across the united states in terms of total rainfall keys at the bottom of your screen we'll be watching for the threat of upwards of two to four inches of rain across much of florida same thing with the texas panhandle over the next five to seven days good chance we'll see two to four inches of rain there and then even down near miami there's gonna be a chance for upwards of four to six inches of rain in a bit more of a widespread area one thing i want to point out about this storm is that the low level jet will be cranking enough to the point where we might get an isolated tornado threat late saturday night into sunday morning across central and eastern florida so keep that in mind if you have any plans there might be an isolated tornado threat by that point here's a closer view of this so again any storms that develop will primarily be during saturday night into sunday morning here across much of southern central and eastern florida that'll be the area to watch for for an isolated tornado threat in terms of wind gusts this is going into sunday around about six in the morning wind gusts could get upwards of 50 to 60 miles per hour along the immediate coastline just out to sea there might be wind gusts upwards of 60 to 70 miles per hour by monday those winds really clear out but much of the state will at least be around 30 to 45 miles per hour so again close to tropical storm-like conditions are expected here across parts of florida but again this will not be a tropical storm thank you so much for watching make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you've not already